So, oh, we were discussing the need for power system in the city in planning and application. Mm, yes. A power system. Uh, when, mm-hmm. when we do the planning and the operation of power system, we need the power system analysis before doing any planning or operation. We do the power system analysis. Like if we are set up in yes. the, if we Plan. are planning to build a grid station, uh, if we are yes. planning to build a distribution station, then we need a power system analysis to analyze the mm. system's ability and its parameter. <coughs> Mm-hmm. So the operational planning covers the whole period ranging from the incremental stage of power system development. Uh, yes. When we do the operational planning, like uh, if we we have built in a grid station and we are going to operate it, then we do some operation operational planning. We calculate the uh, initial voltages and we calculate the final final voltages to to cover the whole ranging periods from incremental yes. state to the system development like initially we will uh, uh, we will start from like uh, beginning uh, gradually we will be doing the increments to develop the uh, to develop the system at the final stage the system operation uh, engineer at various points like area space regional and national load dispatch deals with the dispatch of power uh, what uh, what we will do we do the uh, high uh, system operation engineers they will do the analysis on area and, and space and regional and the national load dispatch uh, on a, at, with the dispatch of power like they they do the analysis on power dispatch uh, what will be the effect uh, uh, on the power system transmission from distance to the distance if we keep the small distance, what will be the effect on power system transmission parameters? If we keep the long distance, what will be the effect uh, on the power transmission parameters? Okay. So this is the power balance equation. Power distribution is equal to summation from uh, attrition 1 to n power generation i. J- this g stands for the generation and i stands for the number mm. of uh, iterations are number of uh, power gates that uh, they mm. whose whose power we are summing up okay so the total demand is equal to the sum of real power generation the demand of total power is equal to the sum of all real power generations that we are generating okay mm-hmm. this is the uh, equation for the total power demand Mm-hmm. If, we, if we keep the value of uh, g power g i1 we will be the generation one pillar if we, we keep the value uh, of i2 we will be the getting the pg2 and so on up to the mm-hmm. n, n capital that's the all generation should be uh, such a way that to meet out the required demand uh, all the Disco that all the uh, energy ministries of the energy work uh, in on this formula like they uh, do the generations according to their demands uh, they always keep okay. the, they always keep their generations uh, higher than their demands if uh, uh, because if suddenly demands increase if suddenly loads increase on the power system then what we will do if uh, load will suddenly increase on the power system and we don't have uh, uh, extra power in in reserve so it will cause uh, cause to go the frequency down so okay. so it will be uh, if frequency will go down from the nominal uh, nominal value then it will cause to shut down the generators one by one then overall will blackout can happen so the uh, power entities or uh, power producers keep the power generation in higher demand uh, as compared to the required demand like they uh, they keep some power in reserve so if we if suddenly load increases then they can supply to uh, that power that reserved power to that load uh, when this relation is satisfied it gives good economy and security uh, if we generate the power mm. according to the demand, then it will be in 
uh, it will be a most economical like we are generating the power mm-hmm. and we are utilizing it we are utilizing and we are yes. getting money from it and we don't have any wastage of power so it will be most economical mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the operation of a power system uh, must be reliable and uninterrupted as mm-hmm. as we say that uh, uh, we have a lot of loads that uh, are never going to be shut down we cannot uh, off them such off them so we need the power system must be reliable mm-hmm. and uninterrupted it shouldn't uh, go off mm-hmm. it should be always in within their limits mm-hmm. it, it should not go in low voltage that it shouldn't go in up voltage higher voltages as uh, so the power uh, power system power operation must be unreliable and un- uninterrupted because some of the factories or some of the industries we cannot okay. shut down them shut down them off they work 24 by 7 hours the reliability the reliability of power system implies more than availability of power system this point means that a, a power system must be reliable like it should be in this sta- stable it should be in the nominal range Uh, like if uh, we have uh, the required voltage is like 220 then it should be like uh, 200 to 220 or 230 it shouldn't go down the 200 cuz mm-hmm. these, these are the nominal values if it will yes. go to the uh, down or it will go higher and from the nominal values then it will it is going to uh, mm-hmm. uh, damage the equipment it is going to damage uh, the system so this means that reliability of power system implies more than availability so reliability is the most important factor in power system yes and the load the load must be fed at constant voltage and and frequency as i already told you that uh, we we have some uh, nominal values we have to keep the voltage and frequency in their nominal values if it's going to be higher it is going to cause uh, effect on the load and it's going to be lower than it is also going to uh, make a trouble for the loads so the load must mm-hmm. be fed at constant uh, voltage and frequency so we have to uh, must supply the voltage and frequency constantly to the loads uh, like electrical areas are large in size mm. uh, so planning for the future expansion of power system is essential uh, mm. as uh, as we know that uh, uh, electrical areas like where the grid stations or power generating stations are set up they they mm-hmm. are in, in large site they have they have long area so if mm-hmm. uh, in future we are going to grow like we are developing some industries and in, in other loads if we need to expand our grid uh, stations generating stations so it must be a uh, planning for future for the expansion so we do uh, this uh, through the power system analysis um, more network data must be collected for planning uh, planning a power system network Uh, we do the some network data collection for the planning of power system network this is the same uh, for planning of power system power system engineers use computer program obviously they, they will be using the computer program to plan the power systems and their operations mm. <laughs> importance of power system planning and operation analysis covers the maintenance of generation transmission and distribution facilities mm. Uh, why we do the power system planning because uh, because it covers the uh, maintenance factors it covers the generation transmission and distribution factors so we do the power mm-hmm. system planning uh, analysis and operational analysis in order to see the parameters uh, for the maintenance of power system for the generation of power system transmission and for the distribution facilities in future mm-hmm. <coughs> so the, this is the diagram it, uh, it's very explainable that uh, uh, this diagram explain, explains the last point importance of power system planning and operational analysis cover the maintenance 
of the generation transmission and distribution facilities. This is like uh, they like uh, planning. And then uh, we do mm -hmm. when we, we when we are setting the gate station or power generation station. We first of all do the planning. Then mm -hmm. we then we monitor and compare the plans with the results. Mm. So we see, see that uh, what we had planned and uh, how we are getting mm. the results. Yes. If we if we get the no or undesirable deviation, like if we are getting uh, the same results as we have planned, then it's okay. Then it's okay to go with the first planning. If we are not uh, getting, if okay. we are getting the undesirable. Uh, undesirable results like uh, we had planned to uh, generate the uh, 500 kV like for example yes uh, if we are getting the yeah. 500 kV then there is a no undesirable deviation because we had planned to generate yeah. 500 kV and we yes. are getting it the uh, uh, into 500 kV if we are not yeah. getting the 500 kV then it's an undesirable deviation like we that we plan 500 kV and we are not getting 500 kV. So this is a, a mm -hmm. this is a, not the planning that we did. So in order to remove that deviation, we do the new uh, new corrective action. We do the planning new planning to implement that uh, uh, old planning that we did earlier. Yes. So this, this diagram overall explains the planning of our system. Yes. So, steps to to be followed by the planning, the planning of power system, and number two, the implementation of the plans. First of all, when we are doing any setup of power system, we will do the planning by power system. Then we will implement that plan, and then we will monitor the system, and then we will compare with compare with the results. As I already explained, that first we do planning, then we implement that plan, and then we monitor to check the parameters of overall system if we uh, they, uh, let's suppose we uh, made the pylon for 500 kV generation and we are getting 500 kV then it's okay yes if no undesirable deviation occurs then directly go to the planning of the system uh, if we didn't get an uh, uh, undesirable deviation then uh, we directly go with the uh, first planning that we did if undesirable yes. deviation occurs, then take corrective action. If uh, we get any uh, error, or if we are getting not the desirable results that we did by, uh, during the planning, then we have to take a corrective action. Yes. That's to increase or decrease and then go to the planning of the system. Uh, take, yes. Uh, take, the, uh, take the corrective action and then again implement the planning that you did. For planning and operation of power system, the following analysis are more important. Uh, load flow yes. analysis, short circuit analysis, transient analysis. How we do the load flow analysis, short circuit and transient analysis, we do this through the power system analysis. That's why the power system analysis is the uh, most important uh, subject in electrical power. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so, in while we are doing the planning and operations, we must do the load flow analysis, short yes. circuit analysis, and transient analysis. These are the uh, topics of power system analysis that we will uh, discuss uh, in next sessions, in coming sessions. Yes. To identify the potential uh, deficiencies of proposed system, the cause of equipment failure in malfunction can be determined through system studies. Uh, it says that uh, uh, we can um, we can identify or determine the malfunction or deficiencies uh, uh, deficiencies through power system studies. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so coming towards the load flow analysis uh, in power system analysis, like how we do the load flow analysis and what is the load flow analysis in power system uh, analysis. And normally, uh, electrical power system operates in their steady state mode. And basic calculation yes. secured to determine the characteristic of this state is called load. Uh, yes. So load flow is means that uh, electrical power system works in a steady state mode, like it's uh, work in the in a stable mode. Uh, the yes. basic 
the basic calculations that we do for, do to determine this characteristic is called load flow like we do the calculation yes. for uh, like current and we do calculation for power and angle so that is called the uh, load flow analysis power flow yes. studies are used to determine the voltage current active and reactive power flows in given power system as i already told uh, yes and you are the same person on whatsapp or different what are you same person on whatsapp yeah i'm same So, uh, we will we were discussing the power flow analysis. Yes. Uh, these uh, these conditions may cause uh, uh, equipment equipment overload or unacceptable voltage uh, levels, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, the steady results can be used to determine the optimum size and location of the capacitors for power factor improvement. In power mm -hmm. system studies, we determine uh, the optimum size and location for capacitors. That uh, uh, how to uh, how to uh, how to place the capacitors links and power power lines, and how uh, what will be the size of those capacitors. We also determine these like uh, these things, uh, these parameters through power system analysis. Okay. The results of power flow analysis are a starting point for the stability analysis. Uh, these conditions make uh, uh, we are uh, there, okay? Are you getting? Yes. These conditions may cause equipment overload or unacceptable, uh, unacceptable right. voltages. The steady results can be used to determine the optimum size and location of capacitors uh, for power factor improvement. We do the power uh, system studies to determine the size of the capacitors and location like where to place on the transmission lines where to be, what will be the size of the capacitors or uh, shunt devices for power factor improvement. For power factor improvement, we normally use the capacitor banks and steady power compensators. So, to determine okay. their, their sizes and uh, their locations, we use the power system studies <coughs> and load flow analysis. The uh, results of the power flow analysis are a starting point for stability analysis. And for the stability analysis, we also do the uh, load flow analysis or power flow analysis and like uh, okay. we will see that uh, is the power system is operating in, in their normal condition or is it st stable uh, or it's uh, not uh, unstable this is all this yes. is also a, uh, needed to evaluate the effect of different loading condition of an existing system uh, this, okay. all, this is like we do the uh, do check the conditions uh, of uh, existing systems and evaluate evaluate them on different loading. Like uh, if there is a resistive load, what will be the effect on power system? Uh, uh, because mm -hmm. of that, if there is a capacitive load or if there is a inductive load, what will be the effect on the power system? Okay. Then in power system analysis, we also do the short circuit uh, analysis or short circuit studies. Short circuit, yes. short circuit is any part of power system causes a manifold increase in current and creates abnormal or faulty condition in the system. What is the short circuit? Mm -hmm. Short circuit is like if we, it creates uh, uh, it creates a abnormal condition to the system is called uh, short circuit or fault. Due to the short circuit, the current may okay. current may goes to increase it and voltage becomes zero because uh, in short circuit there will be no resistance. Because of uh, zero resistance, the current will increase and uh, voltage will drop to the zero. 
there is a defaulty condition okay. or abnormal condition in the power resistor. We do yes. this uh, short circuit analysis in power uh, power system analysis. The short circuit studies are performed to determine the magnitude of current flowing throughout throughout the power system at various time intervals after a fault. Let's suppose the fault has been occurred in the power system. Let's suppose this is a line to ground fault. Mm -hmm. If we do the then we do the, the short circuit studies to see the magnitude of current, how much current is flowing uh, throughout the power system at uh, various time intervals. Like in, in 0 0.5 seconds, what was the magnitude of current in at one second? What is the magnitude of current in during the short circuit? The magnitude of uh, okay. uh, current flowing through the power system after fault varies yeah. with the time until it reaches a uh, steady state condition. Uh, this thing is like that uh, uh, when uh, fault occurs, magnitude of current uh, will be varying with the time. As time will be increasing, the magnitude of current will be going to increase until it reaches a steady state condition. Like in the starting, it, uh, it increases with uh, the time. And when uh, after a certain time it will reach to the steady state condition, then it will be a constant at the all time. In an initial time, it will be increasing with the intervals of time. <coughs> uh, the objective of short circuit analysis is to precisely determine the current and voltage at different locations of the power system. Like the short circuit analysis, is, uh, uh, the objective of the short circuit analysis is that we determine the current and voltages at different locations. Yes. Corresponding to the different types of fault. Like if there is a line to ground fault, what will be the current and voltages at one location and another location and on third location? If there is a line to line fault, what will be the uh, magnitude of current and uh, voltage at the different locations on different interval of time? Such as three phase to ground fault, line to ground fault, line to line fault, double line to ground fault, and open conductor fault. Okay. So. Uh, the uh, transient stability in this. Uh, we uh, saw previously that in power system analysis we do we do the uh, different type of analysis like load flow analysis, short circuit analysis, and transient stability analysis. We study the load flow analysis as well. We study the short circuit analysis as well, and now we will be studying transient stability analysis. What is that? The ability of power system consisting of two or more generators to continue to operate after a change occurs on the system is a measure of stability. Like it is the ability of power system that consists of two generators to continue to operate after a change mm. has been occurred. Mm. It is a measure of stability. Like let's suppose if uh, there is a, a faulty condition on the power system then how it behaves to the system, it is called the stability. It is called the mayor, mm -hmm. mayor of stability. Yes. In power system, the stability depends on the power flow pattern, uh, like gener mm -hmm. generator characteristics, uh, system loading level, and line parameter CTC. So, on third, there are two forms of instability in power system, such as loss of synchronism mm. between synchronous machine and, and stalling of a synchronous load. And how instability occurs? Like uh, there are two generators, they are generating the same power and they will, there will be synchronized, synchronism between those generators in order to, to keep the power, power transmitted to the single with a single transmission line. 
we do the synchronism between those two gen different generators. If they are uh, uh, going to lose the synchronism, uh, we are we are uh, giving any asynchronous uh, loads to the system, then it will it will cause instability in power system. The stability may be divided into a steady state and transient state. There are two types of sta stability. Number one is the steady state stability and transient stability. Okay. What yes. is meant by steady state? Yeah, steady state stability is that uh, when the system behavior does not change with uh, respect to the time. Transient stability is that when system behavior is changing with the time intervals. We will discuss it now. The steady state stability is defined as the ability of power system to remain in synchronism following relatively slow load change or continual changes in generation and switching out of the line. Okay. The steady state uh, stability is like if uh, there are two generators and then they are operating in the same condition and they are already synchronized to each other. And if they remain in synchronism, then it's like uh, steady state uh, stability. Transient uh -huh. stability is defined as the ability of power stuff to remain in synchronism under large disturbance. Transient stability is that if uh, uh, any a disturbance occur uh, in power system and the system remains in synchronism like two generators uh, are operating and they uh, still operate in the synchronism then this is called uh, transient stability such as fault and switch operation okay. the maximum power transfer rate is less than that of the steady state condition Tra uh, in Transient stability, the power transfer limit will be less as compared to the steady state condition. Transient stability studies are conducted when new generating and uh, transmitting facilities are planned. The studies, like the studies are helpful in determining the nature of a relay, relay system that are needed for critical clearing time of circuit breaker. Okay. Uh, are the voltage level and transfer cap capability between the system. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the various steps involved in power system planning and operation are listed clearly. Like these are some references books that uh, uh, are used for power system analysis. The one is Adi Sadar power system analysis, and other is Kundar power system analysis. These are list of books uh, that we can study in the power system analysis course. These are the basic uh, introduction of power system analysis course. Uh, the other yes. Design, operation, and protection. Example one. Hmm. Uh, those, uh, those, the date was the basic introduction of power system analysis in here from US slides. It starts from the numerical hmm. analysis. Yes. So, example one is to convert the uh, following time varying values of phasor form and represent on phasor diagram. Mm -hmm. uh, these are uh, the voltage, these are the, this is the value of voltage and this is the value of current. And this example says that convert these values into phasor form and then represent on a, on a phasor diagram. Mm -hmm. So, first we will convert them on the phasor form. What we will get when we convert the uh, 3 and then 2 cos 314p plus 75p into phasor form, we will get 3 and we will get angle of 75 degree. I don't know how to do this, brother. How, how do you do it? Just a
So uh, we ha- we had to convert the these values of voltage and current into the phasor form. How how, how you do them? Uh, in your slides, it's directly they have it, but you can do them with. Uh, Do you know how to do it? Okay, let me let me draw. Like B. This is highlighter, brother. Okay, how to take a pen? I think. I'm not sure. This W is for omega, right? Okay. Omega T plus five. So you will compare uh, this above V one with this uh, uh, standard equation, right? Okay. So you will get, as we said that how we will uh, uh, convert the time varying values into phasor form. Uh, the, this is the phasor. This is phasor form. And uh, this is the time varying equation. So we will compare this V1, this V1, okay. uh, this V1 with uh, this the standard equation. Okay. Yes. So we will get the value of uh, Vm as three. Okay. If we compare it with this, we will get the value of Vm. As three, mm-hmm. and uh, we will get uh, the value of pi as seventy-five. Did you understand it? So it's just substitution. Did you understand it? You mean? Yeah. You mean we we substitute the values in the start uh, standard time varying uh, equation? Yes. Yeah, you have to compare the time varying equation that is given. This is the yes. Let me highlight. Uh, this is uh, that is the time varying value. Like right? okay. Okay. This is the given value, and. Uh, mm-hmm. This is the standard time varying equation. Okay. So 
this is comparable with it. this is standard time verification we yes in order to get the value of b m and phi we will compare this is about cash if we now compare yes. that uh, this a uh, this p of t is same to the this v1 of t and v m this v m is same with this 3 mm -hmm. okay so we can say that uh, v m is equal to as we have wrote here this v m is equal to 3 oh, okay okay and uh, uh, phi is equal to mm -hmm. 75 this is the phi in this way we can uh, convert the time varying value to the pressure form and now from the lower uh, let me from Seventy five equates to what? To five. Yeah, from time varying values to phase diagram, phase form. Okay. Let me remove this. Okay. So this is the V uh, one is equal to where is the letter? This V one is equal to three into twenty five. If we get by comparing the standard time verification with it, the time varying. Values of these, these values. Okay, so we get uh, the value of D M as three. So we get the value of phi is seventy five degree. Mm -hmm. Similarly, in okay. in current, what is the standard uh, equation of current? Let me write the standard equation of current. I of t is equal to I n plus this W is our method. This is the standard time varying equation for uh, uh, current, and uh, I will also write here the standard equation for voltage. Just to keep you in mind. These are the two equations for the standard equation for uh, voltage mm -hmm. in the current. So uh, here from this equation, by comparing this equation with uh, with this, uh, we get that I a value of I M is one. It is one. Mm -hmm. And uh, the value of I M is one. And we get uh, the value of mm. this pi, mm. this pi minus fifteen. Uh -huh. Okay. So in in Taylor form we wrote V M angle minus fifteen uh -huh. because we know that uh, 
feather form as in medium and angle. Let me take some. Okay. Uh, I said that the voltage feather form is equal to V is equal to mm. Vn angle phi and the standard current feather form is equal to Im angle phi. We got the value of uh, Vn as a 3 and we got the value of phi as 75 so we wrote V1 is equal to V1 is equal to let me remove this box. We got the value of B1 is equal to 3 angle 75 and we got the value of I 1 is equal to 1 angle minus 50. Mm -hmm. Then we then we converted these values into rectangular form. These values are pressure form or polar form, we can convert these values into Form. You can convert okay. them. You can convert them with a, a direct scientific calculator, or you can convert them with a, a calculation. Okay. Did, did you understand how to calculate? Uh, how to do through conversion from feather form to rectangle form? Uh, I think we should do more uh, questions. But if if you can do maybe, maybe uh, for next time uh, do maybe what's it called um, uh, prepare uh, like these questions we will do or introduction for these. Yeah, I, uh, I will like, uh, do to the like create a, a small slide. Yes. Yeah.
Okay. So these values are calculated with uh, these formulas. 